Hey guys, let's talk about replacing drivers in loudspeaker systems. Now, you might need to replace a driver in the event that one becomes damaged and you want to restore proper operation to that loudspeaker. Or perhaps you have this notion that you can put a better, higher performing driver into that box to improve the system performance. So let's have a chat about some of the considerations when replacing drivers. Well, let's consider the case where you have a loudspeaker system that has become damaged and one of the drivers isn't working. Well, it would make sense to pursue an identical OEM driver to replace the failed unit with. That way you'll restore performance back to its proper operation. In the event that the drivers that are used are fairly commonplace, it's very likely that if it's a compression horn driver that's got a problem, you can just replace the diaphragm rather than the entire driver. And that's pretty easy to do. You just remove the driver from the horn flange, usually remove a few screws off the front of it to open it up, and you can pull the failed diaphragm out and drop a new one in place. And that would be, in most cases, a lot less expensive than replacing the entire magnet assembly and driver unit. When replacing the diaphragm, I almost always spend the extra money and get the OEM diaphragms from the original manufacturer. By doing that, I'm assured that I'm going to restore performance back to factory spec. Now, with a lot of horn driver units, you can purchase aftermarket diaphragms for a lot less money. Some of them might be good, some of them might not be so good. Minor differences in the materials used or the manufacturing can result in sound character changes. And so is it worth trying to save a little bit of money if it's going to not yield the same level of performance as it should have with the proper part? So if it was my horn driver, I'd probably in most cases purchase the proper OEM part from the original manufacturer. There might be a case where you have a lot of failures. Maybe it's rental inventory, a system used in a karaoke show, and if you find yourself frequently replacing horn diaphragms, well, in that case I might pursue an inexpensive aftermarket part if I can find a manufacturer that provides parts that actually work well. But generally, I wouldn't take the gamble. Now, in the event of a failed woofer in the system, the same principle applies. Uh, you can certainly replace the entire assembly, and that's safe. But if it's an expensive woofer with a nice cast frame, it might be possible to recone that unit. And if you can acquire a replacement cone from the original driver manufacturer, that isn't a difficult job. You just scrape out the old cone, clean up the frame carefully, align and glue in a new cone, and you're good to go. It's not a super difficult job, and you can restore operation of that woofer. Now, the issue is that you might find cones from third-party manufacturers that say they're compatible with that woofer system. They might be, they might not. It's critical that the replacement cone has exactly the same weight and the same kind of suspension with the same level of elasticity to it. Otherwise, the woofer will not behave the same as it did originally, and it will impact the performance of the box. So those are my considerations when just trying to do a straight replacement of an existing failed driver, which is you want to make sure that the replacement is as identical to the original as possible. Now, in the case where you think that maybe if I replace a driver in this box, I can improve the performance. Well, that may or may not be true. But does it make sense? Financially, I would say it probably doesn't make sense. Because 
putting non-standard parts into the box is most likely going to negatively affect the resale value. Even if those parts you put in are really high quality parts. If somebody is trying to sell me a JBL loudspeaker of a particular model, I know what I'm dealing with. But if they say, but I've replaced the components in it, well, at this point, it's an unknown entity. And there's a lot of uncertainty with that. And uncertainty tends to lower my interest in the deal. It tends to lower the amount of money I'm willing to spend. And so if you're going to spend a bunch of money putting upgraded components into that box, you're probably not going to recoup that investment at time of sale later when you decide to transition out of those boxes and move on to something else. Can you improve the performance of the system? Well, sure, if you make good choices, you could. And so am I saying you should never pursue this? No, not necessarily. I have some boxes that were made by OAP, and OAP makes some real nice sound reinforcement boxes. And those boxes came with Eminence 2002 horn drivers in them, which is a popular compression driver. Um, it's a good driver. But in the application I was using those boxes in, I thought that the high end sounded just a, a little bit brittle to me. And so I did some investigation and tried to find a replacement driver that seemed like it would fit in that box properly um, in terms of what it does to the crossover and um, the frequency response, the, the crossover points, the sensitivity, and determined that a particular driver from BNC looked like a good replacement for that. And so I put BNC drivers into those boxes, and I think it made a big improvement. The, the high end is now very clean, bright, clear, and transparent sounding. So I think that was a good upgrade. And I'm not too concerned about the impact on the eventual resale value because I don't have any intention of reselling those boxes. And if I do, well, I originally got them at a pretty good price. And they've served me well for a long time, so I feel like I've received my value from that purchase. And so if they don't resell for a high dollar, well, that's fine. I've um, gotten lots of good use out of those boxes, and they've served me well. So if you do decide to replace a driver with a different driver in order to get better performance, uh, some things we should keep in mind. If we're talking about a mid-range driver or a high-frequency driver, this tends to be pretty doable because those drivers don't have a lot of interaction with the enclosure. Some things we should consider, however, is that the driver that we're replacing and the new driver that uh, we're going to be put installing should be rated at approximately the same sensitivity level the same amount of dBs of output per watt input. Otherwise, we'll disturb the frequency response of the box. Now, if we're off by a dB or two, we'll probably be okay. But if there's a significant difference in the sensitivity from the part we're pulling out versus the one we're putting in, well, that's going to have an impact on the sound of the box. Another thing to consider is that we have to make sure that the impedance of the replacement part is the same as the original. So we can't replace a 8 ohm driver with a 4 ohm driver or vice versa or something like that because the crossover that's in the box is dependent upon the impedance of its load in order to determine its crossover point. So if we put in a device that has a different impedance rating than the original, that will mean that the crossover will most likely be not sending the proper frequency range to that component, and that will mess up the response of the box. If possible, we should take a look at the crossover design in the box, if you can find a schematic for the crossover. Most loudspeaker systems typically have pretty simplistic crossovers in them that are just fairly straight ahead textbook frequency dividing networks that are designed to work with any standard drivers attached to it. 
However, there are some boxes, some higher-end boxes, that have very sophisticated crossovers in them that have correction built into the crossover to do corrective operations to make it get the best performance out of the drivers that the manufacturer chose. And so if the crossover has certain corrections in it for addressing a specific driver behavior and you replace that driver, well, now all bets are off and you might not get good results with a replacement driver even if that replacement driver is a superior device, if you are got a bunch of correction being applied to the crossover that no longer applies to that kind of driver, well, that's not going to work out well for you. And so, um, replacing the high-frequency driver, not a huge issue. Um, obviously, you have some mechanical issues. You need to make sure to get a replacement that's going to fit in place properly and and bolt up into the enclosure appropriately. Um, fortunately, most things are pretty standardized, so you can probably find a replacement that isn't of the same form factor as the original if you want to uh, swap something out. Now, when it comes to the low-frequency driver, replacing woofers, this gets to be much more involved because the woofer and the enclosure work as a team together. It's a tuned system and that enclosure is designed to have a certain interior volume and perhaps a certain venting that is carefully tuned to work properly with the woofer that the manufacturer has specified. Now it's possible to find another woofer out there that will match the tuning of the original and will drop into the box and work okay. Or a replacement that will be hmm, pretty close and still work okay. But the trouble is that you generally can't tell if a woofer is going to work properly in the box by looking at it. I mean, you can certainly disqualify some. You could pull a really heavy duty, big magnet, cast frame woofer assembly out of the box and compare that to a replacement, which is a stamped frame and not very much magnet and lower power rating and say, this probably isn't going to be a very good replacement. It's nowhere near as rugged and it's just not of the same character as the original woofer. Most likely that's not going to be a, a very good replacement. But on the other hand, you could look at another woofer that looks very similar to the one that came out of the box, but it's not going to work as well because its behavior, its dynamic behavior, is just different than the original. There's a whole bunch of specifications called the Teal Small Specs, which are things like the QTS and VAS spec and so forth and so on, which mathematically model the behavior of that driver. And it has uh, a lot to do with things such as how stiff is the suspension on the cone, how heavy is the cone? How much magnetic flux does the magnet assembly produce? What is the impedance and inductance of the voice coil coil itself? And all of these factors roll together into how that system operates, what its resonant frequency is, and how peaky is the resonance? Does it happen over a fairly wide frequency band or a very narrow frequency band. And by running mathematical equations with all of these factors involved, the, the teal small math, we could model what kind of box is going to match that driver and allow it to perform as best it can. Those equations can also completely model what the behavior of the system is going to be and allow you to play what-if scenarios so you can see what would happen if you put that driver into a box that's a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger, a box that has a lot of stuffing inside of it, which causes the uh, system to appear like the interior volume is a little bigger than it actually is, or very little stuffing, and the impact on the venting, if you have a large vent or a small vent, and so forth. To do this modeling, we use software, and there's a 
bunch of different software packages out there that can run these teal small equations for you and help you design loudspeaker systems. Uh, the one that I've used most is a software package from Eminence, Eminence Loudspeakers, called Eminence Designer. And so with that software, you can take a look at candidate replacement speakers, run the numbers on them, and see if they would be a good fit into the enclosure that you have. And it will model the behavior so you can see how much power the box could take with that sized enclosure, what the frequency response is going to be with this driver and this enclosure. But without running the numbers, it's just about impossible to tell whether or not the loudspeaker that you're considering is going to work well in that enclosure. Now, when you pull out the failed driver, it would be nice if you can get the teal small specs of it so you can compare that to a replacement candidate. There are tools. Uh, Parts Express had a uh, tool called Wolfer Tester, which is a PC-based tool that will run tests on a driver and allow you to determine what all these teal small parameters are. Uh, that's useful in the case where you can't contact the manufacturer and get that information. But the bottom line is that replacing a woofer in an, uh, an enclosure uh, isn't something that you probably should just do based upon gut feeling. Uh, you know, if you want to get proper results out of the system. It's something that you need to pursue with a little bit of mathematics. And barring that, it's probably best to replace it with the same driver that the manufacturer put in that you know is tuned properly and designed for that box. You could purchase a really high-quality woofer that um, is a great part, but if you put it into the wrong sized box or the box with the incorrect venting, you're not going to yield the performance that that driver is capable of. So uh, that's one mistake that I see a lot of people do is they pull out woofer drivers and replace them with something different, thinking this is a really good woofer, I'm going to put this in the box and it's going to improve things. And Well, sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't, but it's a complete crapshoot unless you've done the actual mathematical modeling. And like I mentioned, it's not something you can really just look at very easily and make that determination. So I hope that those tips give you some ideas as to how to proceed if you have a loudspeaker that you want to replace some components in. And if you like this sort of th content, if you find it interesting or informative, I'd appreciate if you take a moment and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because those actions help this channel grow. Uh, if you do choose to subscribe, hitting that bell icon for notifications will keep you informed when new content drops, so you don't miss anything good. I appreciate your support, and hope that you watch more, and come catch our next upcoming episode of Sound Advice. Uh, my next episode will be talking about replacing loudspeakers in guitar amplifiers or adding more speakers to your guitar amplifier. So I hope you stick around and catch that one too.